All right, welcome to our last day, our last module here in Muse 360, Hip Hop Music Culture and Aesthetics. We are going to end talking about one of Detroit's greatest, one of the most important producers, um, uh, Jay Dilla, JD, James DeWitt Yancey. Um, and, you know, hey, listen, you know, a lot of fan fanning going on for this dude, you know, after after his death, you know. But um, we're going to talk about him today and talk about some of his influence on hip hop production technique and music. You know, um, he sort of carried on the uh, the torch from Pete Rock and and all those people um, with innovations and, and influence. Um, and everybody seems to really like him. <laughs> Um, you know, and want to copy his style, which he wouldn't like, y'all. Come up with your own style. Um, you know, sometimes I like to play Jay Dilla beats and Pete Rock beats and uh, have fans guess which, who's a who, and they're like, oh, that's Jay Dilla. That's Jay Dilla. It's Jay Dilla. It's actually all Pete Rock stuff. But anyways, um, so yeah, we're going to talk about the late, great James DeWitt, you know, Yancey. Um, he's from Detroit, you know, um, and uh you know he's a beat maker he actually you know got his start with another detroit artist um named uh fat cat and they had a, a 12 inch record that came out on payday called a uh, day with the homies their group was called uh first down um that was the first record pretty pretty rare pretty pretty dope kind of kind of record um but uh yeah dill is a, a you know an mc rapper he's got some good bars and he's a dope you know dope producer at, producer who had many different phases in his career. Um, he learned how to make beats and got his hands on an MPC. Actually, he got his hands on an MPC um, from Amp Fiddler, who's, uh, who's this, uh, you know, a dude around the way in Detroit, um, kind of known for his studio and put, putting people on and helping out young kids. And basically, you know, Dilla took took an MPZ home and fucking mastered the thing, you know, in his own way. You know, he was kind of notorious, notoriously known for not reading the manual and just doing his own thing, just kind of figuring it out. Now, uh, he his, his group that he was really known for was named Slum Village. I love the meme. If I can find it, it's uh, this dude for, with a University of New Hampshire shirt on saying, uh, Jay Dilla changed my life. Who's Slum Village? <laughs> uh, pretty funny, but um, you know, uh, JD, yeah, just just real important. Uh, you know, he, he had some records out and um, some beat tapes and stuff like that. And it was actually Q-Tip who heard what he was doing in Tip. I mean, when we talk about Q-Tip of a tribe called Quest, and we talk about his importance, I mean, he 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 worked out you know, a lot of things for Mob Deep to get them on loud and get that, to get them whole popping off. Mob Deep's the infamous, you know, um, and he brought Jay Dilla out, you know what I'm saying, from relative obscurity, and he, he, he helped get him out, because he heard his program, he heard how Jay Dilla chopped stuff, and then how he pressed the pads um, to make music, and thought he just had real unique, real humanist sort of approach to beat making, and so it was Tip who put him on and, um, you know, got his, got his big breaks as part of the UMA production group, which is him, essentially, and Q-Tip. Um, and they produced uh, two of the Tribe Called Quest records that I like the least. Um, <laughs> Beats, Rhymes, and Life, which is, is good. And then the worst Tribe record of all time, A Love Movement, uh, which is ho just awful. But that was at the time when Tribe Called Quest... Uh, they were under contract. Both those records were records they made under contract because they have to make them by contract. But you could tell like Fife and Q-Tip did not like each other and you could see it in the documentary and you could hear it on the records. Um, but he was also in another group called the Soul Quarians. Soul Quarians is like Erica Badu and uh, Kareem Riggins and Questlove um, and D'Angelo. Um, that's the Soul Quarians. So um, yeah, I mean... What he's really known for, yo, is just like his crazy, you know, chopping, programming, um, and he changed his style. Like he never had like a like a like DJ Premier, right? Like you could hear a DJ Premier record from the late or 
early 90s, early 2000s, early 2010s, and 2020, and you know it's a DJ Premier record. Dilla changed, you know, every couple of years, you know, he changed the sound. Um, and he had a lot of really dope remixes. I mean, he had some really incredible remixes. And he produced some albums that, uh, or had a, a, a hand on production of a lot of records that, you know, people really liked, but they didn't know who the fuck JD was, you know, until he, until he passed away. I and mean, he passed away in 2006 from a blood disease called lupus. Um, notoriously producing a very important instrumental hip hop record, uh, you know, J, J Dilla's Donuts. Uh, on his hospital bed as he was dying, his mom would bring in, bring in records for him to make beats with, you know, I mean, the dude was meticulous. Um, all of his records were kept in plastic, you know, he was really meticulous about all that stuff, um, you know. Um, there's actually a really dope story about how some dude bought a storage, <laughs> a storage locker, and it was um, one of Dilla's lockers, he'd, you know, whatever, um, that had, like, demo tapes in it a ton of his records and um you know j-rock and a, a bunch of people associated with dilla um helped to sell sell off collection records from his collection um you know a few years a few years ago i got a couple of them um which is pretty pretty cool you know you want to have some some dilla dogs records but uh rest in peace you know um but yeah he had a really unique style which is why like everybody who wants to sound like jay dilla he would be like yo don't sound like me sound like yourselves you know um, but some notable records he produced, um, you know, was uh, The Far Sides, uh, Lab Cabin, California. Um, again, I said Tribe Called Quest, Beats, Rhymes, and Life, and um, Love Movement. Uh, he produced a great record for Common called Like Water for Chocolate with the, the Soul Quarians. Uh, he did an album with Mad Lib, or, uh, you know, he was in a group with Mad Lib, but he did an album called J Lib Champion Sound. That's a dope one. And he produced a lot of uh, the tracks on Voodoo uh, by D'Angelo, um, amongst a billion other things and some amazing Slum Village records. So 